Hi and good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of Hans Christian Andersen Capital, I'd like to welcome you all to this presentation of the Q2 2023 report from uh, SCARCO that was published last week. My name is Asmus Koiborn and I have the pleasure of welcoming uh, both the uh, group CFO of SCARCO, that's Thomas Peterson, who is today joined by CEO of SCARCO Vibration, Lionel Giraud. Uh, they promised to take us sort of through the uh, the recent numbers from the Q2 report and also take, as we are joined today with uh, Lionel, take a deeper dive into the uh, SCACO vibration business. Uh, before I hand over, I would also like to welcome all of those of you who signed up today and are particip participating. You can ask uh, questions as usual. And if you prefer to do it in Danish, you're welcome to do that. We can do the translation or otherwise, of course, in, uh, in English. Um, we are recording the presentation here so you can watch it afterwards on different platforms if you prefer. And with that, I would uh, leave the word to you, uh, Thomas and uh, Lionel, please. Thank you very much, Rasmus, and uh, welcome to everybody who is uh, viewing today. Uh, we have looked forward to um, have this session today where we actually present our Q2 report for 2023. Uh, as normal, um, we will have the, uh, the agenda where we have this uh, normal uh, disclaimer about uh, the figures and so on, and uh, I'll not use much effort on that. Then the agenda is that due to the fact that we have Lionel here, we will deep dive in a vibration as we have gone through uh, SCARCO at, at glance, uh, then the uh, SCARCO group results. I will also take a just a short overview of what has happened in SCARCO concrete for the second quarter. Then Lionel will take over SCARCO vibration and the deep dive on SCARCO vibration as well. And then uh, as we have um, come up with a new uh, guidance for 2023, I'll just use a couple of uh, minutes on that at the end. And then we have the Q&A uh, at the last. <clears throat> as you know, uh, many of you have uh, been here before, but uh, SCARCO at a glance, uh, we are uh, like we, we have been for yeah, many years, two divisions, SCARCO Vibration and SCARCO Concrete. Uh, it is divided into four segments, the concrete business, and then in vibration, we have recycling, minerals, and hardware, which is a fastness in the automotive and building industry. We are uh, a company which is internationally driven, uh, and we have uh, in concrete uh, plant and after sales and in vibration, we, have, we are a equipment provider. Uh, right now, we are 208 employees worldwide. Our headquarters is in Faubourg, and we have main offices in Strasbourg in France, where Lionel is located. And we also have um, a location in San Sebastian in Spain, which is the company that, were, that we bought in 2029, the Dati company. <clears throat> the number of shareholders has increased a little bit. Uh, compared to last quarter, we are now uh, approximately 1,900 shareholders, whereof uh, approximately 94% is located in Denmark. And as previous uh, quarters, the board of directors and the management um, holds 33% uh, of the share capital. The key figures for uh, Q2 2023 has been extremely good. As you can see in the top, uh, SCARCO Concrete has uh, been increasing their revenue uh, quite a lot, and the two divisions are now equal to each other uh, compared to uh, revenue. Uh, if we look at the split between plant and after sales, then plant sales is approximately 80 million this current quarter, and after sales is 42 million. Then if I just should highlight some of the uh, good key figures that we have in Q2, then we can see uh, that the revenue has grown with 15% compared to the same quarter last year. We end up at an EBIT before special items at 9.7 million. That is up with 84%. And the EBIT margin, uh, which is also extremely good, ending up at 7.9%. And that is uh, compared to 5% the same quarter last year. The order backlog is maintained above 200 million which is extremely good. And I will uh, go a little bit deeper into those uh, figures as we move along. If we look at the PML, then we can see that we have had a very good growth 
and uh, our activities is very high. That uh, influence that we have a very good EBIT for this uh, current quarter, ending at 9.5, 9.7 million. And if we uh, compare it to the same quarter last year, that is up with 84%. <clears throat> Uh, we also have a order intake uh, again above 100 million um, and if we look back uh, for previous quarters then we actually can see now that we are taking orders in uh, above 100 million each quarter uh, and uh, some of you can maybe uh, remember quarter two 2022 where we had an extremely good uh, order intake and uh, it was actually there where we ended up having a order backlog above 200 million Danish kroner. And we have uh, during this period for yeah, five to six quarters now, maintained this order backlog at above 200 million. And that gives us an extremely good uh, outlook for coming quarters and also uh, for the rest of the year. We have uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, hired our guidance for the year. Uh, I'll come back to that later, but, but it, the guidance is now 36 to 40 million Danish kroner before uh, special items. <clears throat> As we also can see uh, in, the, in the bottom on the graph, then we can see that uh, we have an uh, EBIT margin on 7.9, and if we look uh, back to the previous quarters, that is uh, actually the highest EBIT margin that we have had, uh, except for quarter four, 2022, which was 8.6%. So, so we are actually uh, coming up to a higher level on EBIT. So that is, uh, that is pretty good. Then uh, on the balance sheet, then we also have some good key financial ratios. Uh, our assets is due to the fact that we are growing the business, uh, also increasing, ending up at 414 million Danish kroner. And we have seen an increase in uh, both trade receivables as well as um, uh, rental agreements in France and, and US where we entered to, to, to new agreements. And uh, also the deferred tax as an asset has been uh, increasing due to the fact that we see a higher profit for the period and also coming forward. And then we're taking more of the deferred tax, which actually is outside the balance uh, into the balance. Uh, one uh, key financial uh, number which um, has been uh, developing a negative is actually the net debt, which has uh, increased from 30 million last uh, quarter in 2022 until uh, approximately 58 million Danish kroner uh, this quarter. And that is due to the growth in our activities and also due to some receivables in, uh, in US and in France, uh, which have, um, been paid a little late, but have been in our hand uh, after the end of this quarter. So we don't see any uh, risk towards those. And of course, the net debt, uh, the influence uh, also on the cash flow from the operating activities um, where we have actually a negative cash flow. This will uh, most likely be improved during uh, Q3 due, due to the fact that the trade receivables uh, that were due end of June has been paid in third quarter. The EBIT margin uh, has improved from 5.0% to 7.9. That is an increase on approximately uh, 2.9 uh, PP uh, compared. And that is, uh, that is pretty good. And uh, the ROIC has also increased uh, by 5.8 PP to 16.9% in this quarter compared to the same quarter last year. <clears throat> The capital structure in the group, uh, due to the fact that uh, our trade receivable has increased, then uh, the the um, the number that we are actually also looking into net debt to EBITDA has increased to 1.3. Some of you know uh, that in our annual report we have this target on having this below uh, 2.5. So we have still. Uh, 
plenty of space up to our normal target. And as we see uh, in the bottom, then we can see that the, the share price is going a little up and a little down. It has um, decreased a little bit uh, in this current quarter up to the uh, end of June, 9.3% uh, down, but today we are at uh, 76 pro, uh, in the share price. That was uh, the numbers for the SCACO group. Then I will uh, just uh, use uh, a couple of minutes on SCACO Concrete, where we can see there has been a very, very good growth on 35%. And that has been uh, driven mainly by uh, plant sales, which has increased approximately 100% during this uh, first quarter. That is driven by some of our focus markets, where we have also, uh, during the last uh, quarters, uh, hired new sales organization in both US and Germany. Um, and it is uh, giving us a payback now, where we can see those two areas is growing very, very, uh, very much. Growth profit uh, increased 20% to 11.8 in this uh, quarter compared to um, 9.8 in uh, 2022. EBIT is up by 58% and EBIT margin ending up uh, at 6.1 compared to 5.1 uh, last year. And if we uh, take a look at, at the previous years, then we can uh, see that in 2022, the fiscal year, we're ending up uh, at an EBIT margin on 5.5 and in 2021, uh, 3.7. So, so we are actually quarter by quarter uh, increasing the EBIT margin in concrete business. So uh, a very good result in a concrete, whereas we also have a order backlog, which has increased by 6.5% to 131, 135.1 million Danish kroner. And that gives us a good outlook uh, for concrete business in the second half of 2023. And with those words, I will hand over um, the slides to Lionel. Yes. Yes, hello to everybody. A few words about this uh, quarter two for, for, for vibration with uh, <clears throat> a growth in, uh, in revenue, a little growth in revenue, but the most important is the growth in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in gross profit and uh, in EBIT. Uh, we had an increase of 11% in, in uh, gross profit, but the yeah, most uh, most important, this uh, increase of uh, 74% in uh, in EBIT compared quarter two quarter two last year. Uh, we had a very good order intake in quarter two, but in the same time we were facing uh, we were facing increase of cost, especially uh, the the steel price. We increased a lot uh, a lot uh, in quarter two of uh, 2022. That's one of the explanation of this. Uh, this this in, this increase in uh, in EBIT because we were able to uh, to adapt our sales price to to the to the market and the, the increase of uh, of cost. Um, we have a very good expectation for 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 this year and uh, ambition uh, for and for for next year is to have an increase between six to eight percent uh, in in revenue and keeping our our uh, EBIT ratio of uh, ten to to eleven percent. Uh, regarding the business uh, itself, um, we are a company uh, which make equipment for industrial use and uh, specifically for industries uh, of bulk material. And we are in a niche which uh, use uh, vibrations to to move to move uh, to move bulk materials to separate uh, bulk materials and to uh, clean bulk uh, bulk materials. Uh, you must uh, know that everywhere there is a bulk materials, there is a, a vibratory equipment somewhere. So that's a technology which is very used, despite we are in a, in a niche in a in niche of uh, industry. On the on the on the screen, you can see uh, some example of our product uh, from uh, from left to right. Uh, you can see on the on the left side uh, two product for the mineral segment. One uh, screen. Uh, vibratory screen which uh, which can separate by dimension uh, material and we, and we can clean or wash uh, bulk material as well and uh, a washing drum as well uh, below the screen 
which uh, is which is an equipment to 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 wash uh, bulk material on the middle two uh, two equipment for the what we call the hardware segment uh, or the for the fastener industry one it's a lift tipper which uh, which move upward the uh, bulk materials uh, that's uh, it used in uh, yeah as i told you in industry called the fastener or hardware that's an industry for small metallic part like screws or or bolt or yeah very used in the automotive sector the the second second one for that wear sector in the middle is a the storage feeder uh, it's an equipment to store and to move uh, uh, forward some uh, small metallic part very used as well in this industry and the two last one uh, two equipment which came from uh, the company we we made the acquisition uh, three years ago dartec uh, which are used in the recycling uh, segment the densimetric table which can separate bulk materials by difference of density and a flip-flop screen a very useful uh, machine to separate by by dimension um, very used in the in the recycling segment so all of this uh, you can understand that all of this equipment uh, require a specific know-how uh, to, to, to be designed and uh, as well for, for the application. And this uh, specific knowledge that you cannot learn at school is one of the strengths of the, of the company. And our company is made of uh, three main companies, uh, European one. Uh, we deliver everywhere in the world, but uh, all the three companies are located in, uh, in, in Europe. The first one is in Denmark, is located in Denmark, in, in Faborg. That's the headquarter of uh, Skyco Vibration. Uh, and then uh, the second one is in France, in, in Strasbourg, close to the German border. Uh, and the third one is uh, in Spain. Uh, we call it Skyco Dartec because uh, its name was Dartec before we made the acquisition. Uh, it's located in the Basque country, in, uh, in the north of Spain, close to France, uh, in San Sebastian, the city of uh, San Sebastian. Uh, each, comp uh, each company has uh, sales and after sales function, but uh, as well uh, some uh, function and capacity in design, in production and uh, customer services. So that's uh, very important. This uh, strong, um, this strong power close to the close to the customer, and each company is an expert center in one of the main segment of uh, Skyco Vibration. So uh, Skyco Vibration Denmark in, in Faubourg uh, is an expert center for the hardware industry. Uh, this uh, industry to which uh, was for a small metallic part like screws and, and nuts and bolts. Uh, in France, uh, in Strasbourg, we have the expert center for the, the mineral industry. And in Spain, uh, that's an expert center for uh, the recycling industry. And uh, yeah, you know, Skyco Dartec is a the most recent company of the of the of the division we joined the group in uh, 2019 few uh, few words about uh, the three main segment of uh, skyco vibration uh, so we yeah through our product and all of our uh, technical uh, competencies uh, we propose some some product and solutions to our customer in the three main segment the first one, which is a historical one, uh, it's uh, the, the mineral uh, industry. Uh, and we say that our product in the mineral industry uh, help our customer to sort uh, and clean uh, bulk material for their best use. Um, uh, and in the fastener industry or in the hardware industry, which represent approximately around 15% of uh, of our revenue, our equipment uh, transform bulk into smooth and controlled flow of product, which is very important in this uh, in this kind of industry, spe specifically on some thermal processes, for instance, uh, for galvanization or heat treatment. And the last one, the I would say, it's not a new uh, segment for us, but uh, it's coming, it's growing and growing again. It's coming, uh, is going to be the most important segment for us representing a big third of our revenue. It's a recycling, uh, the recycling industry and our equipment sorts and cleans uh, uh, bulk materials, um, uh, resource to, to make their best reuse. And both um, minerals and, uh, and hardware 
uh, um, are used nowadays to to boost the the recycling segment and the development of the recycling segment. This is our our focus uh, nowadays. <clears throat> Due to this green transition and the the, the mega trend that we know uh, in the green transition, especially in Europe, where you can you could see that uh, we have all of our uh, location main location, and uh, you know that uh, in Europe we are sharing more or less the same rules and the same laws um, about uh, green transition. So that's something that we can have a consistent policy and a consistent uh, strategy. Uh, in the seven, 2017 and 2018, uh, we, we understood that uh, this uh, mega trend of green transition will, will come. Uh, and we could, uh, we could see, we could understand that some product uh, was we are missing in our range of uh, of of product that's why we made uh, we made the acquisition of uh, of of, of dartech of skaku dartech now uh, skaku dartech was uh, founded in uh, 2008 in uh, in spain and uh, i think you remember but 2008 was a was a tough year for everybody it was a year of crisis and especially in spain where the, the construction sector uh, has colla collapsed uh, at this period. And uh, you know, uh, as I told you, that uh, mineral segment, which is very linked to the construction segment, uh, uh, is a historical segment for the vibration technology. Um, our colleague, our Spanish colleague, uh, had to go to a, a segment of this mineral segment which is usually the main segment of uh, our type of, uh, of industry. And they decided to focus on, uh, on recycling, which was uh, the only uh, segment, the only industry which worked at this time uh, in, in Spain. And so they made a lot of development in this, uh, in this, uh, in this segment. They developed the densimetric table, the, the flip-flop screen that I uh, presented you uh, two slides ago. Um, and at the same time, during this period, they became our our dealer for the hardware industry in uh, in Spain and we could see with them that we we share the same values uh, we we made uh, we make a quality product uh, we have a high level of engineering skills and customer services uh, and that's why uh, we decided to make the, the acquisition in end of 2019 and unfortunately uh, 2020 and even 2000 21 where where we're tough year with the covid crisis so i can tell you that the start was not as good as we expected for sure because everything uh, stopped in in 2020 but on the other side uh, i remember july 21 which was a, a recon month for us where we where we receive a, a lot of order uh, in the recycling segment suddenly in, in july 21 and uh, this um, good trend has not uh, stopped yet so uh, uh yeah it's a, it's a very very positive story for for us and end of 20 we can say that uh, the growth of dartex since uh, since acquisition reached 70 70 percent so it's a it's a quite good result a few words about the recycling industry <coughs> uh recycling industry for us and for uh, in general is a complex industry with many many sub segments is it's very different to make the recycling of uh, of glass than making the recycling of steel or stones or concrete or paint or what you want. So uh, it, it requires many, many, many knowledge and many uh, no uh, no application. But we propose some uh, some function to uh, to uh, to our to our customer. Uh, we can uh, make we make equipment. We make a separation by difference of uh, of uh, dimension. We call that screening. Uh, we make some equipment that make um, that separate the the bulk material by difference and density uh, equipment which can make the distribution and the feeding in a smooth and uh, uniform layer it's very important and in this segment too and some equipment which can clean so it means wash and uh, wash and scrub uh, bulk uh, bulk material you must understand that there is no, uh, for instance, for for separation, you can see a flow sheet on the slide, a flow sheet, uh, an example of flow sheet in the in the recycling segment. There is no competition uh, between uh, 
a screen, it means a separation by, uh, by uh, dimension and an optical sorter, for instance. In the recycling segment, we try to separate a lot the, the equipment. So there is a, all of uh, sorting technology are complementary. Where there is a, an optical sorter, there will be a, a vibratory screen and uh, there will be as well a uh, vibratory um, a feeder which uh, will feed the optical sorter in the in the right way so all of those uh, technology are nowadays uh, totally uh, complementary we yeah as i told you many times now uh, for us it's a, it's a mega train this uh, this uh, this this uh, development in the and this increase in the, the growth in the recycling segment it has grown, it will continue to, to grow, and it will require from the customer more equipment like the one we, we produce and, and sell. So uh, that's why we, we focus a lot on this, uh, on this, um, on this segment uh, in which we, we believe a lot. Uh, <clears throat> a few words about uh, this first half year of uh, 2023. Um, beginning of the year, we made a change in our organization, in our sales organization. In the past, we have uh, an organization by, uh, by geographic market, and we decided to have as well uh, an organization by, uh, by segment. So we have a, a matrix organization in the way to, uh, to increase our, our service to our customer, to have a better service to our customer, uh, geographically and by, by segment. Uh, we have um, a change in our pipeline. Originally, our pipeline for the recycling industry was really, uh, uh, I would say, strong in the south of Europe. And nowadays, it's uh, everywhere in Europe uh, due to all of the effort we have already made. Um, and we have worked a lot and we have been working a lot to increase the synergy in the different uh, company to, uh, to, um, to chase for the big practice and to use the big practice uh, everywhere in the division, and of course, uh, an increased focus on uh, on ESG. You can see on the map on the slide uh, the location of the user of our recycling uh, equipment. So we are uh, for sure located in Europe, but we we deliver equipment everywhere in the world. A little bit more in Europe, but you can see that everywhere in the world there are equipment uh, of Skyco. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you the. Talk, uh, Thomas. Yes, uh, and as you already already uh, have been uh, told and seen uh, on our website page, uh, we have increased our guidance for 2022, uh, driven by a very good uh, second quarter of the year, and also uh, driven by uh, many orders in the concrete business. It is mainly driven by uh, the increase in uh, the concrete business and the new guidance is 36 to 40 million Danish kroner. And that is an increase from 33 to 38 million uh, Danish kroner. But our ambitions for 2024, which has not been uh, revised uh, yet, it would be revised during 2024, uh, maintain on and revenue on 400, 530 million and an EBIT on 40 to 45 million. Danish Krono. And uh, with this said, then we have Q&A. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas and uh, Lionel. Yeah, let's jump for some uh, some questions. We have some uh, some five ten minutes. Uh, so if you have any questions, put please put them in the chat. Um, as uh, as some uh, as, as some other viewers has been doing during during the presentation. And uh, let me just jump back here on the slides and a little bit back to this slide on um, on the um, on the Skarko Vibration um, business presence here. There were a few questions relating to this. Uh, let me just see here two seconds. Um, there was one, is Startec outside of Europe and where are the best market opportunities? And sort of a, a question related to, to this also, who are most advanced and in front in terms of re recycling globally? Could you put a few words on that, uh, Horst Lenel, please? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You, you must understand that, of course, it's a SCACO Dantec product, but for us, it's a SCACO Vibration product. It means that uh, we have a, a share uh, sales force in SCACO Vibration. So uh, in France and Denmark and Germany and UK, we sell SCACO Vibration product, which, and a part of that is the SCACO Dantec product for 
for the reason I explained before that uh, part of uh, our uh, previous range of product uh, missed some uh, some uh, some equipment like the flip flop screen and non symmetric table. So Dartek, yes, uh, sell uh, outside uh, outside Europe. Anyhow, our focus area is really Europe for the reason I explained because we we make more or less uh, the same type of recycling uh, in the same same way in in Europe. Uh, and for sure, the type of recycling uh, which is developed country by country is really depending to uh, national laws. For instance, I don't know, if you decide to make the recycling of glass, which is very common in Europe, maybe uh, in Africa, for instance, there is no uh, glass recycling. So you, you will not be able to uh, develop glass recycling in Africa. So that's really depending, as I say, to the, to the local rules uh, that's why we decided to uh, to focus our effort on Europe. Um, the last question was about Dartek and where, but Dartek, of course, is is the the the, the, the leader uh, in in Spain and, and Portugal, and uh, we are growing. Uh, their, their revenue is growing due to uh, Skyco Vibration Network sales network in the rest of Europe. And there was a question related to this also. So, sort of, what is the addressable market for Skago Dartek and the opportunities here? Do you sort of, I guess, uh, you, you see different um, uh, reports uh, from uh, from from this different uh, analysts and strategists and things. So, what what are what are sort of the the total recycling market that you can um, aim with the products you have in uh, in your portfolio today? Do do you have any um, any estimate for that? And figures it's uh giving a figure it's uh, it's uh, it's a very difficult knowing that uh, uh, the figures of today are not the figures of tomorrow because it's really a growing market so uh, there are new markets all the time and uh, uh I, I cannot i cannot give you figures i'm sorry but uh yeah it's it's, it's absolutely too difficult for sure yeah. we are uh it's a complex uh, it's a complex industry and we know where we are good and we we stay where we are good because uh, yeah that's something that we master and uh, we had to yeah uh, the, the the four functions separated by uh, by uh, dimension separated by density this uh, this capacity to feed in the right way some other equipment and the cleaning and washing function that we have this is where we where we are focused on very good then there was a question related to uh, the um, the answer here um, or the, the the one that answers the question is stating that uh, skako concrete uh, has us as one of its uh, growth markets and i think you also mentioned in in the report or in the slides that that the us has been uh, been a good part of the growth in uh, skako concrete so the question goes uh, where does uh, where does uh, skako vibration see the us market and uh, what what kind of uh, units are represented in the us today uh, in us we are we were, we only yeah we only developed the the hardware segment that's something that we started some uh, some some years ago uh, so really linked to the automotive uh, sector uh, what we could see uh, i would say two two years ago is that uh, the the hardware segment the fastener industry is not uh, as developed at the fastener industry in Europe, so there are, there is more mechanization in Europe than uh, than uh, there is in in the US. Uh, anyhow, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a gross market for 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 us in the hardware segment. We decided so far uh, not to go uh, to the recycling sector in the, in the US for some what I explain you. For some uh, some laws which are not the same as in as in uh, Europe, uh, it could be in France or Denmark or or Spain or everywhere in Europe. But we don't do the same type of recycling in US like uh, we do in Europe. For sure, it will come in the in the year to come. So we will go to to US. But on the other side, we have plenty of things to do in uh, in Europe in, uh, in 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 recycling. So uh, so far, we have limited our 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 target in Europe. Very good. And then a question related to your minerals part in uh, in Skako Vibration. As I recall it, Morocco uh, is uh, or was a, a big market, uh, and it struggled somewhat uh, during uh, the um, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, is that market sort of back to full speed now? And and has other markets 
sort of emerged uh, in the meantime for you? Yeah, so Africa is still a very, very uh, strong market for, for us. Uh, Morocco has not shown uh, all, of, all, of, all, of, all of its potential so far, but uh, there are big... Uh, there are still some big plan of investment, especially in this uh, big group, a big uh, mining group, uh, OCP. Uh, so we expect to be uh, to, to receive some uh, some order due to this uh, big uh, big investment. We receive more orders, as you say. The African market were really impacted by by COVID, and everything stopped during more or less two years there. Uh, but now we have a, we, we 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 got order since the beginning of the year. From other uh, African country, like for instance, the the, the steel, um, the the iron mining, sorry, of Mauritania, uh, some orders from Algeria, Tunisia as well, uh, and Gabon, uh, for instance. But yeah, you're right. Uh, we expect something for for Morocco in the in the months to come. Yeah. Very good. And and another area where it could be interesting to sort of have your update, uh, Lionel, while you're with us here uh, today is on the automotive uh, part of your hardware business in uh, in Skarko Vibration. Could you put a few words on sort of what is, uh, I guess, the landscape is is changing somewhat due to uh, the, the, um, the transition to electrical vehicles? And how is that sort of impacting impacting your business? Um, yeah, compared to maybe some years ago, the part of hardware has decreased, but the revenue has increased. So, uh, and uh, yeah, as you could see now, uh, uh, recycling, which represented less than ten percent uh, five years ago, represent nowadays one one third, and and we expect that it will it will grow. Regarding hardware, for sure, the the, the this industry uh, linked to the automotive sector was uh, is impacted by uh, the change in this industry. Uh, especially for the for the European producer, we had a very good start in uh, in 23. In Q2, it was a little bit uh, lower, uh, but now we can see that uh, it's better and better, and there are some decisions which are taken to to invest in the in the automotive sector. In hardware, we we work for the automotive sector, but as well for the construction sector. There are, there are many uh, screws, for instance, which are made for the construction sector, and this sector is in a good uh, good health. So in good shape. So uh, it's still a, a good business for, for, for us. Very good. And then we should perhaps jump on to some other questions and maybe uh, I should address those to you, Thomas. It's a little bit more on the uh, sort of the uh, the capital structure. There is, a, there is a, a question that goes here. You seem very well capitalized apart from this short term optic in net debt to EBITDA you just showed. That seems to be more of a, more of a short term character, right? What are your plans in terms of M and A investments and capital returns? And there was another question going that uh, the 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 um, the one stating here that um, that you trade at a relatively low PE or you know, forward PE, uh, according to the um, to the person addressing this uh, this question. Um, would you do any uh, would you do any buybacks? And in case of buybacks, would the main shareholders participate in this uh, this buyback? Yeah, um, and it is of course a good question. Due to if we start with the M and A, we are all the time looking at the market. But but as we see it right now, then then we actually can grow our business ourselves. Uh, the last acquisition we made was in Dartek, uh, was of Dartek in 2019. But of course, we are looking at all the markets where we are in, and also all the segments, to secure that we have a good market position. But uh, we don't have any uh, specific uh, M and A's at the moment. Uh, due to the investment, then we are, uh, as you also can see, if you look quarters back, then we have invested in having uh, the right employees uh, on the right markets. And especially in the concrete business, we have uh, invested quite a lot uh, on, the, on our focus markets, which also have benefited uh, for us now, where we can see the US and, and uh, Germany is growing very, very good. Uh, and also we are taking shares uh, in those markets, that's for sure. And the uh, U.S. is also driven by this infrastructure um, fund, which, uh, of course, uh, gives us a boost. And uh, together with the new organization in the U.S., we have uh, developed uh, very good. Towards the buyback, uh, yeah, we have the opportunity given on the uh, General Assembly 
but uh, right now um, I don't see that we actually are looking into that. But all the time, the board of directors is uh, looking into the possibility. And if the main shareholder will participate, uh, I cannot answer uh, that question. Very good. Thank you for that, Thomas. And then perhaps a question on the um, on the guidance here. If I just move a couple of slides ahead. Um, as we can see here, you're guiding this on, on, on the EBIT level, 36 to 40 million uh, after your, your recent upgrade. And um, I think after the uh, first, uh, first half of, um, of 23, you have around 17.5 in EBIT. So basically you're guiding for something like 18 and a half to, um, to is it 22 and a half uh, in EBIT in second half of 23. So you're looking at a, at a better better second half. Could you put a few words on uh, on those expectations? How much is sort of secured with orders you're working on now or orders you already have in your books that you're sort of executing on and uh, how much is uncertain of this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we look at uh, the revenue, then we can see uh, the revenue uh, for first uh, half of the year uh, ending up at uh, 258 million Danish kroner uh, and uh, giving us a, uh, as you say, uh, Rasmus and EBIT on 17.5. And um, the increase in the guidance has been mainly driven by the concrete business, where, whereas uh, we have received and uh, quite a huge uh, pipeline and also orders uh, for the rest of the year. And what we are looking into right now in both businesses is that that we are actually more or less closing the production for the rest of the year. So uh, the orders that we are having in right now is actually for the coming years. Uh, so right now we have a good portfolio uh, and we are uh, secured towards uh, the plant sales uh, for the rest of the year, also production-wise. Of course, the after sales is something that comes uh, from day to day, and that is also a part of this uh, expectation. Very good. And then maybe we should return to a few last questions for the, um, maybe we could look into the um, vibration here if i move back uh, we, we have seen this uh, quite a good margin increase here from uh, 6.4 you had in 22 to um, to 11.0 you had uh, um, end of uh, q2 23 could you put a few words on that Lionel? and also perhaps a little bit on the order intake we've seen it come down you still have a very good order backlog but the order intake is, is coming a little bit down compared to last year but there might be reasons for that yeah, 22, uh, as I said, the uh, quarter two of 22 was uh, an, ex an exceptional uh, quarter in terms of order intake. Unfortunately, it was an exceptional quarter two uh, quarter uh, due to uh, the increase of, uh, of steel price, especially and other, other components uh, we had. That's the explanation uh, of this, uh, of the, yeah, the, the better, one of the better results we have uh, in quarter two th this year. Another reason is that uh, maybe like Thomas said, uh, we invested in uh, human resource to be able to uh, to produce and to sell and to uh, uh, according to the, the the forecast we have in our in our revenue. Uh, that that explains the good result we have in quarter two uh, this year. Okay, very good. I think we are through most of the questions. Let me just see if there's anyone I'm uh, I'm missing here. I don't want to miss. Um, uh, there was there was a little one here on sort of uh, on 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 uh, market growth and uh, the market growth we have seen. Has that sort of been the markets growing or has that been you taking market share in your respective markets? I don't know if you, you can put a few words on that. I know it's a, it can be a hard discipline with, with uh, estimating, you know, the markets. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I would say both uh, uh, in recycling, as I, I, as I said before, it's a growing market for sure, but uh, we know that our market share are, are growing too especially in uh, in Europe, out of Spain and Portugal and, and south of France. Uh, so both in the, in, um, in, the, in the recycling, in the mineral and the, and, and the hardware, uh, I would say that uh, uh, it's really our market share, uh, which, uh, which, which is growing 
uh, and we take uh, we were able to take market share from our competitor yeah okay and then one last question that just came up uh, um, it goes here if, if if composition of orders has changed and that probably goes sort of more to the to the Skarko group than just Skarko vibration and um, we haven't seen sort of any announcement of s larger single orders in 23 and and I, I can't remember it, it in full but maybe you can uh, repeat it for us Thomas if there has been any or if that that is uh, that is the case oh that that is the case we have not uh, we have not announced any single orders and, and that is due to the level if on our single orders where we actually have a high level on where we, when we announce uh, the orders uh, and as you can see the orders uh, coming in uh, is actually on a stable uh, level so so it means that that the orders that we are taking in is below the uh, announcement uh, level yeah Okay, very good. I think we'll conclude by that. So um, thank you very much for listening in and thank you very much to both Lionel and, uh, and Thomas for interesting presentation here and, uh, and, and for um, addressing the, um, the very good questions from, uh, from the audience here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you everybody for participating in this uh, event. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye.